Hello and welcome to Dreamloop Diplocasts. Um, today we had a little discussion at the office about something that's uh, actually quite an interesting topic for myself and that was uh, um, playing games for the immersion of it. And essentially uh, it came down to uh, a little uh, discussion between me and Tommy. Hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> And also, hello, Ville. Oh, <laughs> that's we're doing the intro. It's gonna kind of inject it <laughs> yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we we just start chatting about uh, playing games in a way that isn't necessarily optimized. It doesn't like. Uh, I I often find myself uh, not moving my character in a way that makes sense for me to win win the game. But I, but I might kind of role play it like without even realizing that I do it. Like, even in a game like uh, like the new Doom or something. Well, actually, a better better example is like, let's say let's say Half-Life 2 uh, for this uh, for this example. Like, like, when you run out of ammo and you need to reload your gun, uh, I don't just, like, <laughs> just press the reload button. I kind of, like, step out of sight, like, behind a corner and stick myself against the wall and maybe, like, lower the camera angle a little bit and then press it <laughs> even though it doesn't really serve any real purpose it's just it just feels kind of cinematic it's kind of like and, <clears throat> kind of like role yeah. playing yeah You're like do you guys do any of this stuff i mean I find least, my... yeah well you gotta go first <laughs> okay well uh i find myself doing the exact same thing like lowering my weapon to reload it and then pop out of the uh, cover and then continue shooting and another thing i find myself doing like and I, I think this is sort of a, I, I I don't do this uh, like I, I don't realize that I do it uh, only I, I, or like or I only realize that I do it after it has happened. It's like subconscious. Like for example, if there's a, uh, for example in Skyrim or Fallout or some 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 game like that where you have like an enemy that you need to kill who is not fighting back. I sort of uh, get out to the third person and start walking slowly towards him. I listen to what <laughs> he says, and then I go and like finish him up. And uh, and then afterwards, I think, oh yeah, that that looked pretty cool. And um, <laughs> yeah, and it just happens automatically. It's it's really weird. And I didn't even realize that it it may be something with the immersion until today when we started talking about this. That yeah, it's probably it it sort of feels right in the context. And like it feels cinematic and it's immersive that this happens, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if I would use the term immersive because that's something that a little bit like grates me in this context. Is because I mean, you even said like cinematic and mm -hmm. immersive, kind of like in the same sentence. Where of course, what happens in a move in, in a movie, you know, what is cinematic and what is re realistic might not be two different things, uh, or you know, they might not be the mm -hmm. same. Um, that's something that I think we've even discussed before is how video games you know, when they are trying to be realistic, they actually end up being, being movie-like. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's like a, that would be a completely different topic. But I think on, on more mm -hmm. on this topic, the whole like role-playing, like what feels right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, that's, that's definitely a thing I do too. Like uh, something we were discussing earlier is, for example, like in a game where you have to follow an NPC around and they are walking, then you will also mm -hmm. start walking. Like I've been playing Skyrim now um, for a bit and modded Skyrim and whenever there's like I have to follow an NPC or whatever, you know, I put caps lock on so that my oh, joker yeah. also walks, you know, yeah. because it just feels right to do it, you know. It's kind of like one of those little ways that you can interact with the game. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to just be like, you know, direct actions that only contribute towards winning the game. It can also be mm -hmm. like secondary actions that just contribute towards being in the game and enjoying it. And those can be yeah. like really, really small things. And uh, that brought to mind that I think Skyrim is it doesn't do the annoying thing that if you go if you start walking the uh, NPCs either walk faster or slower than you. It depends if you have like I think I have like a little bit more move speed from some perks or something. Mm -hmm. So I have to like occasionally stop or like walk yeah. a little bit sideways or I catch up to the NPC, which is super annoying. That's <clears throat> so annoying. I think, uh, yeah, I think that's also in vanilla. Because I haven't modded my walk speed at all, and, yeah, and it's, I, it's I remember too. I think if happening. you take like one of the perks from like armor, light or whatever, armor, yeah, 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 then you get oh, like a little okay, bit faster, well, that, yeah. yeah, and it doesn't accommodate that. On yeah. The, yeah, 
I like how, uh, for example, Red Dead Redemption and uh, Witcher 3, when you're riding a horse and then you're riding with someone, it will match the speed, so you will go the same speed. Yeah, and in Witcher, can't you even like just make it auto, like follow, and you can just take yeah, your yeah, hands yeah. off it, it auto follows any road that you're on if you don't yeah. give it any direction. Which is really nice. Yeah, and that's like yeah, there's, <clears throat> there's like a lot of stuff that I that I do, but uh, it you know it comes down to like uh, it, to things that it, that are actually quite hard to like immediately bring to mind on command, but, but you know. Yeah, like when an enemy like, is firing on you, like I, you know, you, I, I, I take cover in a specific way sometimes. It's, and that's especially true if I'm playing uh, on the same computer together with somebody, mm -hmm. a single player game. But this one, just sitting it can on the be computer, almost playing. involuntary. Like one thing I've noticed in Skyrim is when I'm picking a lock and the lock pick snaps, I do this like teeth gritting and like squinting my eyes thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Argh. And I've been trying to like not do it, but it's so ingrained, <laughs> kind of like, like it's almost like part of the game that I do that. Uh, and, and I guess like that's, that's one of those things where you really like, you throw yourself into the game, you immerse mm -hmm. yourself and you allow yourself to do all these little things. I think this is like really interesting because these are also things where games can be made in a way that incorporates this. And then that can be very divisive. I mean, we were talking about, um, on the last episode, uh, on the last podcast, we were talking about um, No Man's Sea, uh, the, the, the Sea of Thieves. Uh, we're talking about Sea of Thieves, <laughs> no, for example. No that's, uh, yeah, uh, that's what people I have been what calling you did it. There. Yeah, that's what people have been calling it. Um, <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, like, for example, that's one of those games where it really tries to encourage that type of stuff. Like, you can do a lot of that in that game. But, you know, as I said, it's like secondary activity. it's activities, like it's stuff that you don't have to do. The game doesn't directly give you anything. Mm -hmm. it, mm. it lets you do it and it creates situations where doing it can be satisfying, but the satisfaction is outside of the game, so to speak. It's not like it doesn't give you points or it doesn't give you an item or an achievement or anything. It just lets you do things. Mm -hmm. One thing I think I alluded to <clears throat> previously is uh, about like Witcher 3 where a lot of people, I remember, I've seen people complain about how, for example, I made a mage character and it's boring because <laughs> I only use the fire thing. And then, you know, they get a comment from people like, why? Like, Gerald is not a mage. Like, mm -hmm. it's just a thing you can do. Like, it's not a game where you <clears throat> build around a specific ability. It's more like you have a bunch of things that you can do. And it's more fun if you can, like, role play a witcher and you try to use mm -hmm. all of them, even if some yeah. of them are, like, underpowered. Yeah. And I, well, I noticed sounds... myself, yeah, like doing that in Skyrim too now where like, for example, I made a mage character, but you still want to try melee, for example, and you want to try other things just to like, you know, I don't know, like, even if it's not the most optimal thing, it adds to the experience. And I think there's an interesting sort of divide, and I guess it's not represented in the game genres that role-playing game can actually now mean like or it, it means two things you can actually you have a character that you have to role play or that you create your own character with an old their own story and you role, role play that character and <coughs> since that. witcher witcher has their the main protagonist Geralt who is a <coughs> character that, that has a history and personality and everything from the books it's really hard to try to make him be you yeah, because he has his yeah. own own personality already. And then on top of that, there's the third direction of like you know RPG RPG mechanics, which just refers to you know getting items that mm -hmm. like buff a number or leveling up or like customizing statistic stuff like that. Like it can just mean that. Yeah. So you can have anything from basically like a super rudimentary, just like like you could argue the Discord is a role-playing <laughs> game because you can have a voice chat and role-play over it. You can go from mm -hmm. there to, you know, like the new Doom because you get to pick what stats to upgrade and stuff yeah. like that. You would argue that it has like RPG progression mechanics. So yeah. you have a really, really long gradient. <clears throat> yeah. What makes me really interested in these little extraneous uh, optional movements that you can make your character do in a game is that it has a kind of a healthy parallel to moments when you were a child and you were playing with like action man or or whatever you Barbies you want to play with, and uh, you know uh, I remember distinctly that I would always make 
my like uh, action figures do these cool poses and you know do things in a cool way and i suppose that maybe it's that same phenomenon just happening again within a video game I think you're it's controlling exactly, this cool yeah, yeah i think it's exactly that like it's this kind of like certain certain type of role playing sort of type of like not the type of role playing where you specifically like put yourself into the role of a character necessarily but more like the type of role playing where you put yourself into the role of a director of a movie mm -hmm. for example yeah, yeah yeah that's a good way that's to put what it i was gonna say also like you get to be the director mm. yeah it's it's an interesting topic because uh i'd actually like to hear like many many more opinions on like uh, on like what people do what, what what kinds of small things people like to like to do in, in, I, I always like to fuck around with the physics objects in games. Mm. And th yeah. the more physics interactivity a game has, the more I tend to like it because it feels um, like more reactive and mm. it's easier to, I guess, immerse yourself into the world because it has these um, things you come to uh, expect from your own world. And yeah. it, then it happens in the virtual world as well. And you might like develop like these little quirks mm -hmm. um, that yeah, that you tend to do. Like Bethesda games, for example, are very very good with that. Like where you can always do a specific thing with a physics ob object or whatever. Like I haven't been doing that recently, but for example, what you could do is like like for example, one one streamer I've been watching puts a bucket. Like whenever he's done killing people, takes a random bucket and puts it on on one character's head, and like role plays as if like in world. People are confused because there's this like mass murder going around, leaving buckets <laughs> on people's heads and like you know that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I always like to go and put a bucket on a shopkeeper's head and then steal everything. Yeah, you and can then, do that. Too. And then go to Skyrim and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, Finnish shopkeepers are notorious. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Not they're weird that way. <laughs> they're only weak spots. Yeah. Yeah. It's also what uh, these little nuances and little differences between each person that what they like to do. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the same, that same, very same thing that also gives me trouble when I'm trying to like really kind of role play in a MMO game because people are just goofing around and they're doing all the shit that I I don't think they should be doing mm -hmm. if I were the director of yeah, yeah, what's yeah. going on in the game. Yeah, that's, so like, that's really the annoying thing about MMOs for me too, I think, is because like they're supposed to be MMORPGs, uh, you know, and then like the yeah. whole RPG part, like it almost gets worse for me because I'm used to computer role playing games. It gets worse because you introduce all the other people, especially because they just want to mess around, they want a power game, they want to just, you know, like it just doesn't, it becomes less immersive because of other yeah. people. Yeah, definitely. That's why it's easier to uh, kind of uh, live an escapism moment mm. when you're playing single player games. And all, like especially games that uh give you a really strong atmosphere through for example, mm -hmm. music and art style. Like one game in that sort in my opinion is the Deus Ex Human Revolution. Mm. Really really nice ambient music, really nice graphics that go along with it and I already told you guys today that uh, I uh, often when I played, I just kind of s sometimes stop and look around and look to the sky uh, with the skyscrapers and, and th this kind of thing. And sometimes, uh, sometimes that also like evolves into a little moment when I start to like extrapolate the game world in my imagination. Like I start to think about some of the NPCs and what their like backstories mm -hmm. might be, and and you mm. know. But but it's kind of this fleeting moment that that goes away after a little, little while. And then I kind of get back to like a I don't know if it's a higher level or a, or a lower lower level, but you know I get back to the layer where I complete quests and play mm -hmm. the game. Mm. But it kind of fluctuates back and forth. It's I think funny that's you, like yeah. Funny you mentioned that because I just started playing the Human Revolution again. And, Good man. Uh, <laughs> and then I guess I'll play the Mankind Divided and then I'll get depressed that we're not going to get any Deus Ex in a, in a while. Uh, yeah. But what I like to do in that, in specifically in those two games, is that when uh, I meet a character that, who uh, is sort of a dickhead or something, but he's a civilian or whatever, 
I sort of like to go into this so that Jensen thinks, like imagines this <laughs> next thing that happens. So I press the uh, uh, execute uh, uh, unlethal, <laughs> like uh, unlethal execution move where he punches sure. him in the face, like. <laughs> And then I quick load and he's back there and he's just sort of imagined that oh, I wish I could punch the guy in the face and yeah. then oh, yeah. goes on with his business. Yeah, that is, that's a very, very nice example of uh, the, the, like this whole topic. Like that's a, I think that's a pretty next level kind of <laughs> yeah, it's using game mechanics, so to speak, to terror yeah. play. But I think that's, that's again like one of those things. Or it can be like... Um, like I'm gonna use Skyrim as an example as a segue again, but for example, like one thing I tend to do is, regardless of what type of character I'm playing, whenever I fight a dragon, I always want to do the finishing like attack mm. with a melee weapon, mm. and I hope to get um, cool finishing animation. For some reason, I never goddamn get it, but I don't think I've gotten a single one with my newest character, even though I, every time I take out my like great sword and I try to do it, mm. but it just feels like appropriate that Dragonborn would do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something where, because often I end up having to load the game just because I didn't get, you know, somebody else got the killing move or I ended up having to shoot the dragon or whatever. So I reload and I do it again until I do it that way. And in that sense, it can also <laughs> develop into like a gameplay challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah, God damn, yeah, I'm going to do it that way. And it can even yeah. happen in games that are not necessarily that immersive otherwise, like platformers or whatever. Like I, I am so going to do this specific thing. Yeah. You know? One one kind of strange example of this thing was uh, when we were a lot a lot younger. We used to play Total Annihilation, it's the RTS from mm -hmm. I think 1999 or something like that. And uh, uh, we used to do th sometimes this thing that we start out like a co-op, a co-op game against the computer, and we would kind of role play real world like factions. Like uh, one would be Nat NATO. And when we like UN and stuff like this, it wouldn't have like any bearing really, but we would just maybe s send like some chat messages and like try to act as like representatives of these uh, these factions and maybe mm. form some alliances and uh, stuff like that. It wouldn't always last very long. Sometimes we would just kind of get, uh, it would just kind of grind into a halt and then we would just basically just play the game. But it was a really, really interesting way to approach uh, a gaming session of an RTS game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would is something that would be interesting to do if 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 uh, if anyone would ever want to play a, a, ge a game of like eight player multiplayer civilization. I I would really like to do <laughs> like uh, for example I mean, that would, five where I that would take like two weeks. Yeah, but well, not necessarily if you just like that would be something we could do at the office if we at any point do like actual land stuff. Like where people actually mm. stick stick around there, and we put aside like eight eight hours or whatever. Because if you play it on quick, like you can get through a, a small map on like mm -hmm. six hours or whatever. But it would be really fun to do like see where you had to role play, like yeah. not only a specific nation but in a specific way. Yeah. By the way, I checked um, uh, total annihilation is 1997. 97, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks for correcting. <laughs> get your shit straight. But um, um, with the Civ, I think one problem with I've had with multiplayer in that game is that when you go to the lobby, you see what nation each the, each player is gonna have, and I think that's a, sort of a bummer. I would love like for me not to know what nation the other players are gonna get, uh, and then when I meet them in the game, it would be a mystery. Like, okay, so who is this, and uh, I'm not can I make sure the deal with this person? Can do that with mods. You might be able mm -hmm. to do that with mods. Or, you know, if you do it in the office, we can organize it in, some, in the way that somebody who's not playing, for example, goes around and you tell them what nation you want to pick. And mm -hmm. then everybody looks away yeah. from the computer and that one guy goes around and picks the, picks the you yeah. know, saves and then presses ready, for example. Like, we could incorporate it because that could be, could be fun. Yeah. I think the only way to do that is to all pick random. Yeah, yeah, that works too, actually, yeah. Mm. But then... Um... But, I mean, that could work too. You are forced to pick random and then you have to role play... Uh, what yeah. you think that nation means. Of course, the problem yeah. is that Vanilla Civ 5 is quite, and Civ 6 too, but uh, regardless, like they're quite imbalanced. So depending what you get, Civ 5 especially yeah. can, be, can be good because you can get uh, Venice and then mm -hmm. you're just like, you know, Venice in multiplayer is kind of like, either you do really, really well 
uh, mm-hmm. if other people don't cock block you, or if if a single player decides to cock block you and kill all the city states and plunder your trade routes, you can just can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Just screw it. <clears throat> but Venice is like hard mode. Yeah, um, I've never, I've never, still never played the Civ games. I, I suppose it would be a good. Good starting no. point. If you ever... Five is like regularly on sale, like the complete edition, really, yeah. really cheap. Yeah, I, and I have it. I oh have yeah, it, you yeah. have it. Yeah. So yeah. we could do it at some point. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it wouldn't even be outside of the realm of possibilities to do like a kind of like a let's play a type of thing with it. But we would have mm-hmm. to do it like heavily edited because nobody wants yeah. to watch probably like eight hours of us just clicking. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to kind of like edit it to have only the good bits or maybe we could stream it i don't know it could be a thing but at least yeah, we could definitely play it at some point streaming it would be uh, in a way annoying because then would there would only be like one person's perspective yeah i would really love to this is kind of like going into meta meta discussion <laughs> but i would love to have a setup where we could do like a stream where i think we discussed this before where you could like flip between computers Mm. Well, like who's got if, if, if we had uh, like an HDMI switch, then that mm. probably could work. Or I mean, it, or then uh, the HDMI would just kind of flicker back and forth every time we ta- try to switch the channel it's on, and yeah, resolutions I mean, fly it, all over the place. It would be oh, it it would need some research to get <laughs> yeah. stuff like yeah. that. But oh, yeah, yeah I, maybe I, it's we'll, not maybe out we'll of the realm it. of possibility. I don't think. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. Civ, Civ in general can be like, actually it's a good example of this too, because whenever I tend to play with friends, we tend to do stuff like this. And also you tend to kind of like sort of do this with the AI in Civ mm-hmm. Five, because of course they do yeah. have all these parameters that cause them to act in certain ways, mm-hmm. but it becomes like really pronounced. Like certain leaders, for example, you're just like, well, that person is so going to backstab me, so I'm just going to kill them straight away and stuff like that. And like... Yeah. And you kind of like start reading meaning into into things they do, and I, mm-hmm. also that game can give you like these really amazing situations that you can kind of role play off of, like from a historical point of view, so to speak. Like you see, like I don't know, like a, you know Albert Einstein, the great scientist in like Stone Age, just walking <laughs> around like in a tundra, and you're like, you know, and he's like owned by some nation who's on the other side of the planet, and like, what is the purpose of this, you know, stuff like this. <laughs> Yeah. Also, not to actually like deliberately stray away from the Civ conversation. We could get back to that, but I, I just, I just remembered something. One g- a game that uh, really does this extra role playing for me, and that's Hitman games. Mm-hmm. In those games, uh, now that I think about it, I do a lot of stuff that uh, kind of makes uh, Forty Seven like act more natural around people who aren't supposed to find out that he's an assassin so wait what, you're not st- standing around and just spinning around what, what <laughs> no 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 not not doing that <laughs> but but uh uh we, we could actually have a whole other episode about all the crazy crazy graphical glitches and all the stupid <laughs> physics in hitman games but uh <laughs> but uh i i often when i'm actually trying to like get through a mission i i kind of uh I find myself doing things like standing in a really standing in a spot when I'm waiting for like an elevator to come down or something. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. I'm standing in a spot that looks kind of realistic and Mm. casual, so like the guards don't really like start suspecting anything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I I think uh, that's like in general. In general, if game has stealth, I tend to do that too because stealth systems like usually are not that good. But if you can yeah. like approach them in a role playing sense, so to speak, it can be much more satisfying. Yeah. Uh, of course, Hitman is much much better than my infinite example of Skyrim, where, again, like you know, <laughs> like there's this bit in the Thieves Guild where you have to shadow this, like you know, follow this Argonian around, and like actually, I don't think it matters at all if he sees you. You can do whatever you want. You could, I think you could just run away and like fast travel back, and even that would work. But every time I do that quest, I kind of like try to, you know, sneak and like follow these sneaky routes and like like go up on a roof and like watching from there and jump down and stuff like mm-hmm. that and like just make it more immersive because in reality the mechanics are just not there. Yeah, I think when I play Hitman games, I I do I'm I'm not sort of role playing it. I'm more of the director approach. Like mm-hmm. I want to make it look cool and sometimes looking like making it look cool and and i guess sort of cinematic is that the hit uh, 47 acts 
uh, in a realistic manner in these situations. Mm. So, for example, if I press a button for an elevator, then I walk in front of the elevator doors to wait for it to open. Yeah, and then yeah, I walk I into the elevator and, and not just like uh, duck down and spin around and hug the yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the same stuff I do. So it, it's kind of it goes goes like both ways. Sometimes it's about mm -hmm. making it look awesome in a cinematic way, and sometimes it's yeah. it's some so, something more uh, hard harder to describe mm -hmm. than that. Like sometimes it's more about the so to speak realistic, mm. like and sometimes it can be as said like just kind of like about challenge so to speak too like the you know example of having to melee the dragons in skyrim like that's mm. kind of like like you know you could argue it's cinematic but it also yeah. has the challenge angle like my character is so badass that my character is gonna do this unnecessary difficult thing mm -hmm. and then i'll load until it works so to speak like. is, the, is there by the way any criteria that has to be met for you to get the kill move i have no idea it, uh, um at least there's i think in one hand that there is a, um, hold on. I think there's a perk. That yeah, yeah, you have to, to get a like... specific perk to, but, yeah. but I have the perk, but it okay. still okay. seems to be, and you can do so, like, at least in this mod I have, like, because you can do like, you have to unlock, I think, decapitation specifically. Yeah. But some finishing moves you can do even before, and like the backstabs you can do before. Oh, yeah, 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 Th yeah, that was the thing, yeah. Um, because for example, backstabs, to... I think those are rather logical where like, if the enemies, you know, if your attack would kill the enemy, mm -hmm. you do the backstab. But the finishers don't make any sense because sometimes the enemy has like half health left after four attacks, and then mm -hmm. I do one more, and my dude just kills them. Yeah. And like I yeah. have no idea how it works. I, I guess, I guess it's a crit. Just... Yeah, I don't know, but it doesn't play the crit sound or anything, so I, I really don't know because it doesn't. Oh, it's a Bethesda game. <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Does the crit have a sound effect specifically? I, actually, I'm not sure if they normally do. In the mod, they play the same sound that you get when you do a sneak attack. The, like the yeah, the thong. yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm not sure actually in if in the normal game if it they might do. it might be in the like normal crits as well. Not sure. Yeah. Uh, going back to the dragon thing, um, is it so that only the melee finishers for the dragon show like give you that uh, like a slow motion thing, or does it, for example, if you throw a fireball or uh, shoot an arrow. Does it do the uh, slow motion kill that you yeah, can get Yeah, it can from do the that. I think enemies? I've gotten those where it doesn't okay. do like specific animations. It just slows time down and does mm -hmm. step. My favorite bit is when you're shooting like a, some random rabbit that's running away and it mm -hmm. does this super dramatic like my dude, yeah. like especially with the crossbow, <laughs> like lifts the crossbow and shoots and you follows the arrow all the way through and then he just fucking misses and the rabbit yeah. just keeps running. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Because it's like it decides whether it's gonna do that or not when you press the trigger, mm -hmm. but there, you know, time still passes, so it might still miss. It's quite a weird system. I don't understand why they don't do it in a way where the attack like homes in a little bit. Because who's gonna notice? Mm -hmm. uh, and and I know for a fact that they do that in some of their games, like the legendary homing uh, enemy grenades in in uh, Fallout Four are a good example. <laughs> but uh, so I don't know. It's it's weird. <laughs> And I think it works like when you shoot the arrow, it like it predicts where the enemy is moving, and what what if they change direction, yeah. then it just misses. Yeah, yeah, it, it like yeah, if they, yeah, exactly. If they turn or whatever, or stop or something. Yeah, I think it's I, something I've, like that. Because I've noticed if I shoot an arrow like uh, from far away to a, like a deer or something, I I can take quite a lot of leeway uh, um, mm. like up front, and it will still hit if if the deer doesn't change its direction but i mean the deer are are only one of the things that are very unpredictable yeah in yeah Bethesda the animals games. in general can be but i guess characters <laughs> can be too especially if they start like jittering and doing weird stuff which they mm -hmm. are prone to do also on skyrim and arrows not hitting knees though oh, is oh, that oh. what what the what the like what's up with the uh that situation like er, I, I think everybody knows this that when you're shooting an arrow and like let's say your first shot misses and then they start like looking huh, who's there mm -hmm. and they, they start like walking back and forth and is there like some black magic that that disables me from hitting them with the next couple of shots because they always seem to move 
just out of the just uh, they, out of the way. There's a mechanic uh, where God only knows why it exists, but they can like basically slide sideways to dodge your shot, and it seems to be kind of random, and I think they have to like kind of be looking towards you. And the, the eye symbol, whether it's open or not, that doesn't matter, I, I don't think. I think it doesn't, mm. they never do that if they are actually engaged with you. But if they are kind of like, they know you're there but not engaged, they can just do this like, like just flat out slide without an animation out of the way oh. of the arrow. Okay. And it's, it's an actual thing I've, that they do. I don't, I don't think I've seen that, at least I haven't really You don't necessarily notice it? it, especially if they're like oh. walking around and stuff, like, because it basically looks like rubber banding. It looks like rubber banding in a network game, basically. Mm, and it's an actual yeah. mechanic, apparently. I don't know why it's in, and I don't know what causes it. I think it's <laughs> okay. because they were like, this is, you know, Archer is too OP or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it might be like, because it tends to be like higher level enemies tend to do that more. or, or So it, it might be something related to enemy stats or something like that, that they can do. Yeah, so. that almost, almost sounds like a remnant of the old, uh, like... Uh, Die roll, dice roll, <laughs> combat from yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it almost feels that way. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's really stupid if there's something like that <laughs> in place. But I have to say, like, I have ha I've had it happen so many times that it must be something related to my own playstyle and my own pacing of firing the arrows. But you know, it it's like basically like this: that the first shot misses for some reason, and then the guy starts moving around. Like maybe sideways, a little, a little bit like like back and forth towards and away, and you know I I ready the next shot and takes a little while to to like to prep the bow and the arrow. So like the guy stops walking just before I finish pulling the string, and then I'm like, okay, this one is gonna hit. Now I'm gonna fire, and then just before I have time to uh, let the let the arrow go, he starts moving again. And it's like he just, it looks like he has this amazing buffoon's luck that he just no, moves around and dodges my a, shots all the time. <laughs> that might be a reaction thing too, because they do react to stuff. They also, for example, mm. mages, if they have a um, shield ability, actually that, this might be the mod, but I think this is in Vanilla too. If they have like a shield spell, because shield spells can, the ward spells can block shouts. If you start shouting, mm -hmm. which of course takes time, they will, the exact second you press the input, they will do like a, you know, I don't know, Mortal Kombat uppercut bullshit thing, where they immediately oh. have the word up. Mm -hmm. So they might actually have a thing too, where they start walking if they notice they're about to get hit. I don't know, because they do like react to stuff like that. Yeah. But like, uh, at, at a couple of times fighting mages, it legit felt like the whole Mortal Kombat, like uppercut thing, like I cannot do anything. Like I yeah, cannot yeah. use my Fusrada because they will block it. Every single time. Yeah, I mean, we could we could like totally have a stream where we play some fighting game and we try to decode the fucking AI because <laughs> it's like, like, yeah. like I, I I just recently played a little bit of Tekken against piece, uh, the computer AI and I I just fucking gave up like like <laughs> I, I'm just the only way I can really beat them is to figure out one move that they don't block, and then then just uh, find a way to effectively keep repeating it because it of course it re requires you to maybe take some distance and and you know like reset the situation every time you have used the move but it's all about move, move, uh, using that one single move mm -hmm. and setting it up uh, properly but you can't you can't play the uh, ai in a way that you can play normal normal people but we could like have a stream where we try to beat some really really crazy ais by mm. figuring out cheap, cheap stuff i watched some some people play the the new uh, DC, but uh, injustice is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 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 final boss in that is like super because oh because it's another realms game, isn't it? So it's like super Mortal Kombat. Like it's I watched that and it reminds me because I didn't play the Ultimate Mortal Kombat that much much myself, but a lot bunch of friends had it. And whenever you get against like you know Shao Kahn or or Motaro especially, it's just like whether they decide to fuck you. <laughs> yes, and that boss yes, felt uh, uh, like a little bit similar where on, on the hardest difficulty where if he just decides that he's gonna kill you he has moves where there isn't anything you can do or he has moves where you can for example block it once and then he can just do it immediately afterwards again where you cannot block it so he can just decide to hit you or you know do it from mm -hmm. one direction and immediately from the other or yeah 
Yeah, but I actually a, did a Google search about the arrow sliding dodge thing, and there's oh. a lot of lot of like comments on it, <laughs> and there's even like mods for removing it apparently. And oh, so NPC so it magic really ninja ma matrix arrow dodge. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> yes. And apparently, there's people commenting that they've had people do it when they're sitting on a chair. And they just keep, they slide in the air in the sitting animation, like a couple of meters out of the way of the arrow and just, you know, then get up, of course. Like, what was that? Oh man, I, I want to see that. Yeah. Actually, I'm looking at the video right now. It's Skyrim NPC arrow dodge. And looks like there's a bandit about to get hit by an arrow from the player. But let's see what happens. Uh, well, that one, that first one didn't, didn't. Didn't, uh, he he just got killed. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna link this to you guys because because <laughs> okay. That one one guy definitely like just slid around. There's there's a mod think... for it in the in the Nexus, of course. Uh, no, ma yeah, it's no magic ninja AI dodge. <laughs> a slower mage backward sprinting in the same one, which is of course the other other feature that everybody oh, yeah. likes. That they they are walking backwards and drawing icicles at you, and then you just die. That's of course like that's that's great when you're a me uh, melee character. They just run the exact same speed. You run forwards, they run backwards, and just keep attacking. Yeah, yeah. it's lovely. <clears throat> I mean, it's that's it's funny that these sort of things are in the game. It's like. Oh shit, we have this OP thing. How can we balance it? Let's just make them do magic things. Things that Let's no see. one else can do in the game. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's it's really weird. I don't think I think they they don't have that in Fallout 4 anymore. Like there the enemies don't do like magic dodges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, seen yeah, I and it, it, it's like an AI thing faster, because so. even here you see, yeah, even here you see that it, the first enemy cannot do it. It's only when they kind of know you are there. Mm -hmm. But they are not actively fighting you. Then they do it, and they can only do it like a limited am amount of times. It's yeah. such an inconsistent, like bullshit move. Though, though, if I didn't know that was a feature, I would just say, "Okay, that's a bug." Yeah. Yeah. And go on with the game. Yeah, I mean, definitely looks like a bug. Yeah, so the guy just like there. flies away. <laughs> yeah, but it is it is an actual thing that they put in there for some reason. Like there oh. was I, I as I as I said I did a Google a quick Google search here as we were talking and like people were speculating that it's like some remnant feature or in the AI that's kinda like it's kinda a bug that it's there, but why wouldn't they patch it away? And it's like it's it's really weird. But yeah, like that that might be one of those. Because I remember when I first had that happen a couple of times, like what the hell is this bullshit? Am I this bad at archery? <laughs> I mean, I am pretty bad, but still, I'm not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love a mod that uh, just plays a sound file every time they dodge, like, slight whoop. dodge like that. It's just that you're bad. <laughs> yeah, or like a slight whistle whenever they do like slight to the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and they do it every time too, where like you cannot hit. It's like you know, you can call it like stealth archer rebalance mod. <laughs> it's mm. like, Cannot I think it, that would be like a um, number two mod to get right after the uh, cursing what grabs. And also the autotune bears. Yeah. Oh yeah. I like that this has turned into like talk about Bethesda Games <laughs> podcast. Right? Yeah, I mean, but they are so good in this whole immersion. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true, it's true. It's very, and immersion very breaking Bethesda topic. Well. Like it's, it would be quite weird to... It's almost like trying to not mention Dark Souls in a discussion about difficult yeah. games. And now that's done, so we don't have to... <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, like, how, how was the immersion in Dark Souls? But yeah. since I don't have any any um, ex uh, experience in of those games, actually, speaking about that, it... they leaked the um, something about um, or like, did it even come out? The, I I just re read somewhere that some place like released their. Um, article about uh, re whatever remake remaster, mm -hmm. remaster before yeah. uh, the, the the embargo lifted oh. and i saw like a screen cap off the page before they deleted it wherever they were like it's it's exactly like the original game just with better graphics and like with less lag mm -hmm. but like nothing yeah. is re remade uh, i did i didn't see that one but i saw some some that uh, i mean a reddit post where a guy was concerned <laughs> he had some screenshots uh, from the pc version and uh, of the original uh, mm -hmm. with DS fix 
which improves graphics uh, and compared them to the PS4 uh, version of the remaster. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he got the uh, got pictures from that one, but um, hmm. Actually, I just found a Dist Destructoid article. Yeah, I think the embargo Dark, is Dark Souls right? remastered is looking a bit off. Yeah, um, there were some weird things where the textures actually look worse than mm -hmm. in the original, but they then then the the They're official yeah. screenshots look really nice. Yeah, they're referencing a digital foundry here and they are saying that uh, new lighting model uh, blah, 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 a m far more realistic approach uh, making a lot of the textures look flat mm -hmm. uh, tremendous amount of color change uh, gray filter and some other things missing specular, specular layers and uh, yeah uh, Hmm. I wonder if if the changes have been made with Switch in mind, so mm -hmm. that there has to has, have been some um, compromises there. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to imagine that they had to remove like speculars just for <laughs> the Switch. So who knows? I'm not sure what engine are. Is it their own in-house engine, Dark Souls? I think so. <laughs> not sure. Because they might may have updated some tech and um, that might have screwed things up or mm -hmm. who knows. I've been kind of looking forward to the remakes because I still need to need to play those games at some yeah. point. Yeah, so keep... that's coming like co coming out relatively soon in about two months. But oh. yeah, actually, I need to also answer Thomas' question about uh, the immersion. immersion. And yeah, uh, it's it works for me very well. Because, like I tweeted some time ago, uh, Dark Souls, and the Souls games in general, it's a little bit like your childhood adventures into into a forest. Because, oh, okay, uh, I don't know what where you lived, but uh, <laughs> the forests, the forests where I li I grew up, <laughs> were not filled with monsters that tried to rip your arms off. <laughs> yeah, chests that eat you. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> those things. Uh, but you know the way you rem remember, like g going into a forest as, as a mm -hmm. child, it's like you you remember this musicless, uh, musicless space. Uh, that's uh, that is also uh, like alive with sound. There's ambience. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of a lot of sound everywhere, but there is no music. It's th just you and the forest, and you know what you what your imagination. Mm -hmm. It comes up with and in Dark Souls for me it all works the same way in that uh, when you go into a new place and you don't know what to expect you kind of just you have your sword and you have your shield and, and that's it that it's you against the world mm -hmm. and you all you hear is the ambience because in Dark Souls there's that's no exactly what I remember from my childhood when my parents told me to go outside it's like I have my sword and I have my shield and I have <laughs> yeah. the sounds of the monsters coming to get It's just me <laughs> against the world. <laughs> no, but I, I yeah. get to where you're coming from and I think yeah, yeah. that's Yeah, but you know, that's it. It's uh, it's really immersive in that way. And, and because of that that kind of emotional space that, that I'm in, uh, it, it, that's why I also sometimes stop to just look at the scenery and feel... Yeah, from what I've heard, really it's like nice. the, kind of like the atmosphere of it, where like yeah. you are so profoundly alone so to speak and there yeah. isn't like uh like you don't really necessarily know what to do but you can just go and kind of like try to figure it out and the game kind of wants mm -hmm. you to do that i think it's it's kind of like about that yeah those and, games are expert in making you feel like you can figure it out mm. Mm. and just like go out there and you know try to you know try try to figure out things try to try to push forward try to explore new places and i think it's the it's the whole thing where you know because it's such a you know viewed as a difficult game which from what i understand of course like there are much more difficult games in the world but i think the thing with dark souls is that the difficulty kind of like it can come as a surprise so to speak like it doesn't give you any warning signs or anything you know, it mm. doesn't like it doesn't say there's difficult monsters here or anything. You can just, especially from what I understand, the first game, you can just wander around and you can just get completely destroyed by things uh, in a way where it's not like 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 often it just feels like oh this is this is how this place works. This okay, you have these guys here and they do this and now they killed me, and like 
or now I fell into a pit or whatever. Of course, it does have all these gotcha mm. moments from what I mm, yeah. what I understand, where it's like very well, very much designed that they're gonna screw you. Um, but it's still yeah, about some, this. Sometimes like, you can sometimes you can hear in the distance that there's mm. some like heavy breathing, and you can expect there to be a monster. And sometimes, but I mean, uh, most usually you can see the messages on the ground where, mm. that people are like beware of. Which I think ambush really ahead. adds to that whole like exploration uh, atmosphere too, where you are like kind of alone but there's still like other people are are also alone in the same way and you're sort of like in a way communicating but it's very cool because like video game a video game can never be like i don't think at least uh, when that game come, game uh, came out or, or today it couldn't be like a substitute for real social interaction so mm. i like that they don't even try you know yeah and they don't try to make the npcs like normal people that you would have normal conversations with either they are weird too and yeah. like kind of like everything works together because that's just how the world is it doesn't try to be a reflection of the real world yeah it's like a reflection of your uh, imaginative version of the real world mm. to put it in a really poetic way <laughs> and in a way like it's aware of the fact like it kind of embraces the fact that it is a game in in, in certain level and the fact mm -hmm. that other people are playing the exact same game and you know they can leave messages for you stuff like that that's kind of like a part of it yeah. and i mean it's a, it's a canon thing partially too right with all the invasions and stuff like that like those are a thing actual thing in the game mm -hmm. world too yes yeah i mean they they are tied to the factions in some yeah. regards some factions are about invading other other players worlds mm. for the benefit of the leader of the covenant mm. and then some other factions well they're co called covenants uh some covenants are meant for defending other players against these invasions and some are designed for actually avenging uh the uh, the deaths of these trespasses mm -hmm. i mean the the victims of these trespasses which is Actually, a really really awesome idea the first time i heard about it it was like what this game is next level i i had never heard anything like that in in games before i thought it was like that but it, it was a really cool idea mm. yeah I, mm. I really like how they did that too like I, I i really need to get around to playing those games and the problem is of course that the online is from what i understand not as active these days and it's very much like figured out so to speak then again i guess it will be in the remake too but at least like there will be you know more people people there and stuff like that. so that might be a good point to hop in and experience yeah and, and at least the last time i played it on pc you know uh, there's still like messages on the ground just, just as much as before mm. and and you know i mean like you said it's it's kind of figured out in a way but uh, uh you can still like most likely you can play it like as if nothing happened mm, that's true but I think at least I had to do, I had to finish my Skyrim, scratching the Skyrim itch, and then I had to do um, of course. <laughs> Near yes. Automata after that, because uh, Tommy cannot resist spoiling it for too long, and then Yura mm -hmm. is now playing it too. <laughs> I, so. I really want to talk about yeah. things that the that and, uh, it's, it's ever what seems like a game that you would, like, I would want to talk about too. So I, I think I'll mm -hmm. like, pick that up as the next person. Well, maybe after that I'll pick Dark Souls. It has some, mm. some things that... Um, really affected me as a as a person <laughs> like mm. you know, like i it drove up like very really big emotions at times and that's nice not not in the way that you might first realize but i can't really say much more mm -hmm. uh, um but yeah let's well, definitely I, talk about it oh, have actually, you have you played it matthias by the way no yeah. no actually tommy convinced me that the next game i play is <laughs> okay. is uh metal gear uh rising revengeance oh so. yeah 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 i also and i that, think I, I also you you put a twitter thing up i think i also yeah. voted for you to play that one yeah and uh, you know n now since uh fallout 4 just got an update so the script extender no longer works uh oh oh, they I, broke. I, oh yeah because they, yeah yeah, yeah. I, ca I can't play it now well actually i finished it and i also finished the yeah. minute man quest also, so you i'm can roll basically back. done you can roll back it like skyrim also got a stupid bullshit vr update that broke it, but I just roll, uh, rolled back the update. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll just use this as a like uh, Good excuse way to, to stop, yeah. really, really get away from the addiction, <laughs> so I can get to revengeance and 
Because yeah, yeah. I never played that before either, so I have a Metal Gear game to complete. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and that works as a good like uh, like a warm up for Automata. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but, I, yeah, um, it's, it's they are the same company. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it has a very similar feeling combat. Okay, but cool. Uh, about immersion, I have to like. There's one game that I think needs to be mentioned, and that's uh, Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. Okay. That game really, at least for me, drove the immersion um, in a way that, like, <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I don't know if Matthias hasn't played it, right? Or no, I haven't. And I haven't. Uh, Vilga, oh, well, I, I think Vilga, you have watched. Yeah, I watched or, watched uh, some footage, and I know that it's uh, a very well received yeah, game, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. I mean, that is a game that, uh, for example, like the biggest thing that it does is. Um, it connects gameplay and story in a way that I haven't really uh, witnessed before. And uh, it's a really, really powerful thing that it does. Um, and it really, they, it's a very personal story. Mm. And I felt very immersed, uh, like, into the world. And I really wanted to be there for those two brothers. But that was. Mm. And, uh, um, did it have like co-op, or did you have to do like single? No, it's it's one one controller, two controllable characters. Oh yeah, yeah, just so like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. stick for each, and then uh, I think two interact buttons. Oh yeah, it was like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would really suggest uh, for you guys to play it at some point. But that's it's, uh, not like a two on... three hour two three hour. Uh, game. But that's, that's not it. on PC. Yes, it is. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, that sounds really interesting. If you I have remember like, the game. Yeah, if you have like an afternoon at some point, it's it's really easy to play in one sitting. Okay. Cool. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's true. Fifteen euros. This is somehow I thought it's only on consoles. It was an um, Xbox uh, Summer of Arcade title at first. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So they did the usual, like, oh, this is our, our great exclusive mm -hmm. game nobody will ever be able to play. Mm -hmm. Then Microsoft Microsoft has no exclusive exclusives <laughs> thing, where now everything apparently is an exclusive. Um, I mean, we could even maybe play this um, at the office. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If it's a, such a quick, quick thing. Yeah, but... Um... I think for it to be at its most effective, I think it needs to be played alone because mm. you really need to. Well, you control the both both characters, so you really are um, playing the story. I think like yeah, it's again, it's really hard to explain it without spoiling some things in yeah. there. But is it like? Uh, do I remember wrong, or was it supposed to be played in the way that you you ha you have a friend that you both hold the same controller? Like you, um, at the same I, time, or I guess it might be done that way also. But mm. Um, mm. yeah, I, th I mean, at first it 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 will at least for me it felt very disorienting, like or oh, weird to control two characters at once. Mm. But when when you really get into it, it's it feels really natural at least for and me. And this was developed okay. by Starbreeze. We were just the other day talking about they were talking about what has Starbreeze done. I guess they did yeah. this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this guy who um, God, I can't remember his name. The creator of this game uh, used to be a movie director, mm. which is a really interesting thing uh, when a movie director creates a game that. Uh, does the best job of mixing gameplay with story. Yeah, because he has a <laughs> I guess, fresh perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess he understands uh, the things that need to be um, told to the player through gameplay and mm. not through cutscenes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I think like because we often have this idea or this, you know, you think that a movie person, if they make a game, it's just gonna be cutscenes. But I think mm -hmm. you can also get people from that science side that also understand the limitations of, mm -hmm. you know, their orig original media. So they can understand yeah. which parts they can do well and then, you know, try to do the parts that their traditional media traditionally cannot do that well, utilizing mm -hmm. the things that games can do, that movies can't, and then you can have something magical happen. But we are really, like, diverging into a completely new topic <laughs> here. And when we are, like, yeah, already... Already at like our, yeah. our times is starting to be up, so yes. so let's wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up and maybe like continue 
we could talk about like you know what games could gain from movies and what movies could gain gain from mm-hmm. games or whatever for example that could be one topic but yeah, yeah that let's... topic would uh, most certainly include Hideo Kojima in some way mm, definitely probably and David Cage <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but let's try to let's try to wrap this up and uh... yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.